Hey everybody, today we're going to do a comprehensive overview of all the different types of peptides popular within the space of anti-aging, longevity, weight loss, and bodybuilding. I've noticed there's been a growing interest in all different sorts of peptides given the war on peptides as waged by the FDA, which we've discussed in a more detailed video on the topic which will be in the description below. It's pretty funny that cancel culture has even invaded this peptide space and I sense that, similar to some comedians out there who have recently been cancelled, all this talk about how they should be cancelled will actually spur their popularity and could possibly even benefit them. And I know that there are some more channels out there that discuss peptide overviews, but what will make this conversation unique in a way is A, the fact that I'm not affiliated with any brands or clinics and thus my feelings aren't blurred by financial interest, and B, unlike many of the popular influencers who discuss peptides, you won't hear me say any are all good or without any side effects. My opinions are based off of research and research alone, and so we discuss both possible benefits and things to look out for. All that said, enough of this, let's get started. But first, this is as good a time as any to ask you to hammer those like and subscribe buttons if you enjoy peptide content and enjoy these sorts of videos. I started this channel as a hobby a little over a year ago and I figured others may enjoy learning about the data as much as I do in real time. And I'm pretty damn glad because that seems to be the case. So I'm going to keep making these videos regardless, but it seems the great majority of my viewers are not indeed subscribed to the channel. So if there's any time to give your support via a sub, it's now. Thanks in advance, this is an awesome community and I love being a part of it. Let's get started on these peptides. Let's begin with the famously discussed growth hormone releasing pathway. Growth hormone, which decreases as we age, is popularly known as the fountain of youth. Whether or not I believe in that precise terminology, and let's not go that far. But many peptides act on this pathway. Here's a chart I made because although I often discuss where they interact, it's not always intuitive how. And I myself am a visual learner, so I figured why the heck not? So given that we as human beings are surprisingly complex individuals, despite it doesn't always meet the surface, there are other things at play with regards to this pathway here. However, this is pretty much how it works. As you can see, the H stands for hypothalamus, AP stands for anterior pituitary, and L stands for liver, and I may add that S stands for stomach. And so as we begin most upstream at the pathway here, growth hormone releasing hormone is released from the hypothalamus, which encourages release of growth hormone from the anterior pituitary, and then IGF-1 from the liver, which so on and so forth induces these different actions of IGF-1 such as its influence on bone, muscle, protein synthesis, and glucose metabolism, amongst other things, some of which have been studied and some of which will be studied in the future. Somatostatin is an inhibitory hormone that suppresses growth hormone released from the anterior pituitary. Ghrelin, as released from the stomach, is typically and popularly known as the hunger hormone. It induces appetite. That said, multiple peptides in question here bind to the ghrelin growth hormone secretagogue receptor, which creates a favorable environment for growth hormone release via secretion from the anterior pituitary. And that's why multiple peptides in question as well also make people hungry. So now the fun part. All of these peptides we've discussed quite a bit. And so we won't get as detailed as we typically do, and we'll just do a brief review here. If you're seeking more information, just search through the channel. You'll find videos on all of these peptides in question here. The peptides whose structures are analogous to growth hormone releasing hormone are Samorolin, Tessamorolin, and CJC1295. IGF-1-LR3 is analogous to IGF-1 further downstream, and Ipamorelin, GHRP6, GHRP2, and hexarelin all stimulate that growth hormone secretagogue receptor as attached to ghrelin. And we'll give a special shout out here to ibutamarin or MK677, which is popular, however, is not actually a peptide. It's a non-peptide hormone that acts on this same receptor. Now let's draw attention to the 
peptides of special interest, which have these unique mechanisms of action, some of which we don't even quite know how they work, but we know that they are involved in certain physiologic processes. Now let's start with BPC-157, which I think is one of the coolest peptides out there, which many of you know by now. It's a pentadeca peptide derived from human gastric acid involved in a ton of different physiologic mechanisms involving healing. It's angiogenic, which promotes new blood vessels, anti-inflammatory, acts as an antioxidant, has healed many different types of wounds and fistulas, predominantly in rodent models. TB500, or TB4, is derived from the thymus. However, it's shown to be present in many different sorts and types of body tissues and cells. Known as a healing peptide of sorts, it's shown to heal different types of injuries, predominantly eye and corneal injuries. It's shown to be anti-apoptotic, or preventing programmed cell death, and it may actually be a regulator in infectious physiologic processes like sepsis. And finally, MOTS-C, a mitochondrial-derived peptide. This is an interesting one purportedly closely involved with processes of anti-aging. It's shown to improve skin health and reduce skin aging, improve metabolic risk factors and glucose metabolism, and as a quote-unquote, exercise mimetic, it's thought or theorized to physiologically replicate the effects of exercise. And now we'll talk about the big pharmaceutically produced peptide, semaglutide, and the other agonists of GLP-1, the ones that are advertised on television and everybody and their mother and every celebrity is taking as well. Semaglutide is branded as Ozempic, Wegovi, Rebelsis, and is quite popular, likely for good reason. It's a GLP-1 agonist that improves metabolic risk factors and helps people lose weight. It does so predominantly through this trifold mechanism of stimulating insulin release, decreasing glucagon output, and by slowing gastric emptying, thereby decreasing appetite. Terzepatide, advertised as Munjaro, not only agonizes GLP-1, but it also agonizes GIP, or glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, which is thought to have a synergistic effect in combination with GLP-1 agonism to further increase not only weight loss, but also improvement of metabolic risk factors. And finally, we have rutatretide, which additionally agonizes glucagon receptors, and thus is known as a triple hormone receptor agonist. It's quite unclear what agonism of the glucagon receptors does, however, it's proposed to be involved with improved energy efficiency. Now, call me a bit cynical, however, I do think that a big part of the triple receptor agonism will be a marketing tactic given the fact that it's unique and a new compound. And I do think that this will be one of the biggest peptides, if not the biggest, popularly produced in 2024 or 2025. That's not to say it won't help a lot of people, those are just my thoughts. From a side effect profile, what all of these peptides share is essentially a risk for gastrointestinal side effects, including nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, as well as reasonable concern for hypoglycemia given the fact that they encourage insulin release. Now, AOD9604 and some other peptides I'm considering doing some research on We'll hold off on discussing for now because they will be certainly evaluated in a later video to come, so just stay tuned. All in all, I hope you found this informative, educational, or I just hope you enjoyed this video in general. I know it's a little bit different. If you did like this sort of video and you want to see more of these types of graphics, just let me know. Please give us a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content as well, and thank you as always. I hope you have a great weekend. Take care.